this is my 18 inch by 47 inch uh, wood lathe made by Craftex. Uh, the identical wood lathe is offered by Laguna, Grizzly, and Bailey, and there may be others. And very similar wood lathes are available from Powermatic, Jet, uh, and uh, even Harbor Freight. But the subject of this video is the casters. I've designed a caster system for this lathe so I can quickly extend or retract the casters when I want to bring the lathe out for, for work. I've removed the four steel pads that were the feet under the lathe when I bought it and put rubber belting pads under each of the legs. But the, the casters are designed so that I can jack each end up and push the lathe back into its parking spot or move it to clean up around it. Okay, let me explain how this caster system works. When I pry down on this lever, the caster acts like a fulcrum and it jacks the lathe off the floor. The pedal rocks and I've added a little aluminum strip here as a latch to lock the pedal, for, to provide a place for the pedal to lock down. Okay, just removed, removed a couple of screws to unhinge the latch on this side and uh, flip up a little retainer plate at the back edge and I can slide this caster assembly out. This strap on this side is attached with a couple of screws. So again, the caster is the fulcrum. When I press down on the lever, the lathe is jacked up by the end of this piece of lumber. This near piece of lumber is attached with a hinge. And when I, as I press down, it also becomes a lever. Caster is a fulcrum and it jacks the lathe up. I've added some pads in, this, in the leg webbing here for the uh, jacking system to act on, and I'll just pull it out so you can have a look at it. There's the, the pads by which the lathe is jacked up. So in assessment, when the Casters are retracted, the legs are down. When I push down on the pedal, it jacks the lathe up. So I'm going to go ahead and develop plans for this caster system and then go ahead and build a, a, a production version, if you will, of this jacking system with the video, plans, cut list, PowerPoint, uh, and offer it at a reasonable price. Let's start by building what I'll call pivot blocks or jacking blocks. This is a glued up uh, assembly that lifts the lathe by these, by these webs that are built into each the legs at each end of the lathe. I need to build a block for each end. I've got a 1x4 and a 2x4 and a whole bunch of scrap pieces of 1x4 actually three and a half inches that I'm going to glue together so I can saw out this pivot block or jacking block one for each end. I've glued and clamped the pieces together for two jacking blocks. To fit the jacking block into the lathe legs, 
we need to cut it to a length of 19 inches. We need to radius the corners to fit the fillets that are cast into the, 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 the webs of the leg. And we also need to be concerned about the angle on the underside of this web. It slopes at an angle. Length is level, and it needs to be sloped, the top needs to be sloped two degrees, or an angle of 88 degrees. Okay, so I, we need to cut this, cut these blocks to length, uh, remove material from the top to an angle of 88 degrees, and saw out the profile of the jacking blocks. Set the jointer fence at an angle equal to the angle on the other side of the web in the leg of the, of the lathe stand. Well, it, it took a couple of trips to the disc sander, but I finally got a, a nice fit. Okay, and the pivot block is done. I may take it out and give it a coat of paint, but for now, finished. The master mounting block is essentially two pieces of two by four, two nine and a half inch long pieces of two by four attached with a hinge. The two by four opposite the pedal has a half inch spacer glued to one side and a three inch spacer glued to the other. So from a piece of two by four, I'm going to cut four nine inch, four nine and one half inch pieces and glue spacers onto the opposite sides of one of them for each set of casters. Okay, there's four nine and a half inch pieces. Okay, then we have two six inch half inch plywood pieces and two six inch three eighths plywood pieces for spacers. Glue spacers onto uh, the caster mounting blocks. Half inch on one side, the three eighths on the other. Next, I'm going to mark the hinge holes so I can drill the pilot holes for the hinge attached screws. Cut off the end of the uh, caster mounting blocks at 83 degrees. Position the casters exactly two inches from the mounting plate to the end of the caster mounting board, both ends, and mark the caster mounting boards to drill the pilot holes for the caster mounting screws. 
we need to make two pair of levers out of one eighth by one inch flat iron. I just bought two 36 inch pieces at the uh, lumber store and uh, cut them in half into 18 inch pieces. Uh, drilled to attach to the rear caster mounting block and drilled uh, at the other end for a pedal pivot bolt, 5 16 Then in addition to that, uh, sawed and filed the ends with this pattern so that I can put in, next to the pivot bolt, I can put in a stop screw that will stop the pedal from rotating too far out and down. These should be attached to the rear caster mounting block exactly one inch from the end with a, a couple of screws. So I'll drill pilot holes and attach one of these to each side of the rear casting mounting blocks. Okay, with the levers installed, we're about ready for the pedals. I hope you remember to make this, these into mirror images with the thin spacer going on the inside and the thicker spacer on the outside of each set of caster mounting blocks. Well, let's, let's make the pedals. Three and seven eighths inch wide stock. Pedals are two and three quarter inches long. Cut at a 10 degree or an 80 degree angle. So with the saw set, ten degrees off of ninety, cut cut the. Drill the 5 16 pivot hole, pivot bolt hole in the, each pedal. Making sure your table is flat and the end of the pedal is perfectly square. Cut out a, cut, a couple latch plates from good quality 8 inch birch plywood and uh, glue and staple them to each pedal. Attach the pedals with uh, four and a half inch, five sixteenths inch diameter bolts. Put a washer on each side between the arm and the pedal. And if instead of lock nut, I'm just using a few drops of thread locking compound. screws that limit the amount that the pedal can rock back. Tilt the pedal so that the latch plate is approximately vertical and drill for the rotation limiting screw right in the 
saddle of the notch that we've put. And holding the pedal rotated against the screw on the offside, drill for the near side limiting screw. Okay, and the reason for that is that it's a fairly heavy tool to lift. It takes quite a bit of downward pressure we don't want the pedal flipping down uh, and, and out to, uh, and letting your foot slip off. So that's the reason for the travel rotation limiting screws. Now, here's one other little attachment I need to tell you about. On the pivot block or jacking block at each, on the inside at each end opposite the pedal, I've got a little flip down retainer plate made out of uh, steel plate, thin steel plate, one and a half by three inch. And when the when I slide the caster mounting blocks into place under the pivot blocks, I just flip this little plate down to retain the inner end of the pivot blocks. Of course the arms help retain the near end of the pivot box inside the uh, leg assembly of the, of the 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 latch by which the pedal is locked down is a small strip of aluminum about an eighth by half inch with two wood screws into the pivot block and I drilled holes through the uh, two small holes, two, number six holes, through the leg of the lathe for these wood screws. This plate should be five and a half inches from the floor to the underside of the, of the plate. Five and a half inches. Okay, and with that, except for paint, we're done.